Yeah, boy, getting paid, getting paid. And shout out to the NCAA who will not be able to participate in legalized slavery in the state of California anymore. Let's talk about it. So yesterday, Gavin Newsom signed into law a bill that would legalize players' ability to get paid in the state of California for playing in collegiate sports and having their likeness being used to someone else's financial benefit or creating their own YouTube channel while they're playing, anything of the sort. He actually signed the bill on uh, LeBron James' show, The Shop, on ESPN+. And let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. It's a pretty inspirational um, conversation, but we're going to play the part where Gavin Newsom does, in fact, sign the bill. NCAA will actually do this? Are you ready to? I don't want to say this is checkmate, but this is a major problem for the NCAA. You obviously brought the well, bill here with you today. Man. When you put pen to paper right now, what's this going to change and what's it going to do? It's going to initiate dozens of other states to introduce similar legislation, and it's going to change college sports for the better by having now the interests, finally, of the athletes on par with the in interests of the institutions. Now we're rebalancing that power arrangement. All right, well, let's do it. Is all you ready? Yeah, let's do it, man. Do all right. It's now it's law in California, man. Wait, this, this, is, this is the number one reason why we've created this platform. <laughs> to be able to have moments like this where we got the governor of California signing a bill to allow athletes in college. So this is huge. Um, for those of you who are, who are big fans of the labor movement, and I know many people who watch this show are fans of the labor movement, this is a massive victory. For the labor movement understand that this is not a like a lot of people joke and laugh especially when we're talking about football and, and basketball because like it literally if you've ever been to a pro day or even a combine for the nfl but the combine situation for the nfl is very similar to the situation for for the ncaa when you're just you just have a bunch of people in suits and in polos staring at you, measuring you, weighing you, saying you're ch literally, it's, it's like Mandingo fighting, not even joking. And if you know what Mandingo, if you don't know what Mandingo fight is, when they used to pick slaves, the biggest and strongest slaves, and have them fight each other, it's like you pick the biggest and the strongest and the fastest, and you're like, hey, go make me some money. <laughs> and maybe one day you'll win your freedom. But just like in Mandingo fighting, most people do not 98 percent of ncaa athletes do not make it to the professional level that's ridiculous for you to not be able to get paid there mind you think about it like this i, I hate to use johnny menzel as an example <laughs> but johnny menzel for texas a uh he played for texas a&m was possibly one of the most dynamic and most famous college football players ever now, granted, he came from wealth, so I want to be very clear about that. But let's just say he didn't come from wealth. He, he was undersized for the NFL. He was undersized. He was undersized for a quarterback. Although he was skilled, extremely undersized. He was fast, but not fast for the NFL. <laughs> However, he was great for four or for two years um, for Texas A&M and played for four years and the man's nickname was damn Johnny Football. He was that popular. Didn't quite make it in the NFL, as a lot of people know. However, he didn't make one single dime from putting his school on the map for two years straight. Now, what's even more interesting in the case of football is that the average life of an athlete is three years. In other words, you can you retire in three years or four years, You'll be forced out for whatever reason, cut, injured, whatever. Three years is the average life of an athlete in the NFL. So if three years is the average life of an athlete in the NFL and you can get paid all three of those years, why can the NCAA make $14 billion off of you and you can't get paid from that? 
or you create your own YouTube channel full of your highlights where people like Zion Williamson would have been easily worth three or four hundred thousand dollars by the time he finished college. Uh, Johnny Manziel back in the day, Cam Newton back in the day, uh, 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 Reggie Bush who lost his Heisman Trophy over this. We're looking, we can all the way back to the Vince Carters and the Michael Jordans and the Kareem Abdul Jabbar's and the Magic Johnsons and the Larry Birds who were electric during college. What if they never made it to that next level? And that's the point of all this. When you've dedicated your, I, I and I was an athlete, by the way. Um, one of the reasons I didn't go to college at first to play sports, cause I was a, a all all state triple jumper, and I was an all conference and all region long jumper. I didn't go because I couldn't afford to live. Yeah, I may have gotten the scholarship but I literally could not afford to live. I didn't have a car. I had to still, I wanted to stay around, help my mom, help my siblings. That's one of the reasons why LeBron skipped college. And because of that, I missed out on an opportunity to be trained to go to the Olympics. I was prepping my senior year in high school in the summer before I realized I just would not be able to afford to be in college right after high school, I was prepping to train for the Olympics. Funny enough, someone from my graduating class ended up in the Olympics that I was supposed to participate in. He ran the 100, 100 meter hurdle, actually. So imagine all the opportunities that are missed because people decide they can't even make any money off their likeness. And I was, a, you know, was, you see my show, I was a pretty entertaining triple jumper. Me and my brother were the first brother duo to win first and second in a conference championship, uh, I believe, in the country. Yeah, because we were like all over the newspaper and everything. So, like, this was a big deal for me, and I couldn't even pursue a dream of mine because I couldn't afford it. Because the NCAA was not going to pay me, and I still had bills that had to be paid. Now, other states are supposed to participate in this. They've been waiting to see what California is going to do. And if California does set the standard there, and I do have to give a big shout out to Gavin Newsom from a political standpoint, I do find him to be a little bit opportunistic when it comes to other things. But let me be very clear about something. What Gavin Newsom did right there, not every governor would do. A lot of governors would veto that bill. A lot of governors would take the money the NCAA bribes them with, lobbies with, like every other aspect of our government and our society when it comes to the 1% trying to take power away from the labor force. Let's be very clear about that. So even though I don't always like Gavin Newsom, because I'm a progressive and I'm, you know, I'm a little hardliner on, on a lot of things, for him to go on LeBron's show who has advocated staunchly for this legislation, and I encourage LeBron to get more involved in politics and advocate for other pressing issues in the labor movement because it doesn't only stop at the NCAA, that's for damn sure. I would love to see LeBron advocate for his NFL uh, brothers, brothers more. Um, he's already lobbied a lot, for those of you who don't know, he lobbied to have women referee more in the uh, NBA. So like LeBron is involved in the labor movement on the sports side. And I would love to see that uh, seep over into uh, the actual uh, side outside of sports. But for, for Gavin Newsom to do that is uh, on LeBron's show for the world to see made a spectacle out of it because it is a spectacle. Didn't try to hide it. Didn't hide behind his office. Didn't hide behind you know, hey, I'm just going to sign this. Please don't be mad at me. No, he straight up said, we want other states to do this. And the NCAA has threatened, of course, to keep football, or the, the, the California schools out of the championship games. I'm going to list for you a few California schools <laughs> that they're threatening. Because California is obviously a big state and they have a lot of schools. You have Berkeley. USC, University of Southern California, uh, that's where uh, uh, um, Reggie Bush played. You have UCLA, 
which is a powerhouse in basketball, USC a powerhouse in football, Berkeley kind of okay in football, sometimes in basketball. You have, um, oh man, I'm forgetting one. I'm forgetting one. Help me out. Stanford. There we go. Boom, boom. So you have more, four, you have the most, the most successful basketball team in the history of the NCAA, UCLA. They're up there, for those of you who don't know, they're up there with Duke and, and, and UNC. They are just past both of them because they won like a bunch of rings back to back. You have one of the storied schools in uh, football in USC. And then you have Cal and Stanford, another football school. You're going to stop all of them? You're going to stop all that revenue? Okay, fine. California will come up with their own structure. And then what are you going to do when the other states start participating? In other words, it starts with a domino. Just one. Now, we'll, this is what we need, not just in sports once again, but across the table. <laughs> we need this type of domino when it comes to a, li a living wage. We need this type of domino when it comes to health care. We need this type of domino when it comes to the anti-war movement. It just takes one brave leader to stand up and sign the damn bill and let everybody know why. Not just sign it, but let everyone know why it's important that it be signed and that everyone knows that the bill z exists, who's trying to stop the bill, so you know who your adversaries and your allies are and why it's important that it's signed. So thank you, Gavin Newsom, for signing it. Thanks, LeBron, for advocating for this so strongly and bringing attention to it because that's the only reason I knew about the bill. Um, thank you, California and the senators that introduced this. Um, and I would like to one day extend a thank you to the NCAA for playing ball with the California athletes and not blackballing them. This is, once again, bigger than sports. Labor is labor. You use your body to produce for whoever you deserve to be paid for it. And that goes for college athletes as well. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. Also, you can help us upgrade the studio and take this show on the road to cover the on-the-ground politics that you love by clicking on that GoFundMe link in the description and donating literally anything. Anything helps. Also, you can follow us on Rockfin, on Twitter, and on Facebook as well. And hey, more than anything else, people, always remember, find your balance. Peace.